Welcome friends! I'm creating some DIY dupes with Pottery Barn's high-end decor for Christmas using my thrifted items for less. And we're going to try and find some merch dupes that are budget friendly. Let's start out with these candy cane ribbon trees priced between $29 and $59. I think I have just the thrifted items that can dupe this for less. I picked up these yarn cones for a pack for $4. I think I got seven of them in there, plus a ball of gray yarn. I won't be using the yarn today, but any yarn that I take off, I'll keep, and I can use them for lots of other decor ideas. One of them I thought was tassels. I could do a lot of different colored tassels with these. So the other item that I'm gonna use is some chenille or really fuzzy soft yarn from Dollar Tree. It's $1.25 for one of these skeins and it's beautiful burgundy and white color. Give it kind of a candy feel. I'm going to start out by gluing the very first row of yarn to the very bottom of my little cone and then after that I'm just going to go around and around and just make sure that all of my yarn pieces are close enough together so you can't see the cone underneath. This is really simple and easy to do. Once I get to the top, I'm going to use a little bit more glue to make sure that that stays on there nice and tight and doesn't move. I also take some of the burgundy yarn that was on this roll and make a cute little bow to go on the top. Very simple, but very beautiful. If you don't have these yarn cones handy, you could always buy the foam cones. Those will work just as great. These antlers are beautiful and great for the winter and Christmas season to decorate with, but at $59 at Pottery Barn, I'm going to try and make my own for much less. I have this DAS clay that I've had kicking around and I need to use it up, so I thought I would grab it and try and make my own antlers with it. So first you have to mold it, of course, and it basically I'm going to make one long shaft first of the antler and I'm gonna roll it down so that one end gets smaller and smaller as it goes. And then it will have a point on the end. And then I'll just roll out another piece as a little bit smaller, and I'm gonna attach that to the other side of it, or one side of it. And then I'll just keep adding on until I'm happy with it. I do have a picture that I'm going by on my laptop to help me kind of figure out my design. Now I use some plastic straws and a paintbrush and some straws to give the angles that I want with the antler so that it's not just laying flat. I want it to have some curves and a look of real antlers. So now I'm gonna take this uh, fork and I'm gonna just use the tines to give me a little bit of texture on top of the antlers before they dry so that when I go back later on, I can give this an old aged look. I let this dry overnight and it's still not quite dry enough and hard enough, but it's enough so that I can paint it. And I'm gonna use some off-white paint, give it kind of a bone color. Painting it also helps get rid of some of the cracks that you get with the drying from the clay and it helps get rid of any of the divots that you don't really want. It just gives it a nice overall smooth-ish look, except for where I put the lines in that I wanna use later on. 
Once the paint's dry, I'm gonna go over this with some gold rub and buff. This is antique gold. And I'm just gonna go over it enough so that you get the gold look on it, but you still can see the paint underneath. I'm also then, after that, going to go over it with antique wax. This is where the lines that I created on top will come into play. The antique wax will go down into the grooves and when I wipe it back off from the antler, it will stay in those grooves and it just gives it an aged, older look that I really like. And it also tones down the gold. You can still see it, but it tones it down and it gives it a more old look as well. So really after it's all said and done, I like this project, but it didn't really come out to plan. I should have let it dry longer. I'm just impatient and I wanna get these projects done and see what they're gonna look like. I get so excited, but really it should have dried longer. I should have put more of arches in them. I had more of the spikes sticking up. There's a lot of different things that I would have done here, but you could go to Hobby Lobby or I think even Walmart has them for very inexpensively so that you could just buy those instead and use them in your decor projects around the home for the holidays. Let's take a look at some merch from Pottery Barn and see if we can find some less expensive dupes. This table runner for $129 is beautiful, but the price tag is too much. This one from Amazon is similar and embroidered like the other one, but it's $30.97. It's very similar in length to the Pottery Barn one, and it is really pretty with that holly berry. This one is a special mention at Amazon for $8.99. It's beautiful. It has the holly berry, but it also has the added cardinal theme. Everyone knows the Santa theme mugs are a big hit, but what about this Santa pitcher at Pottery Barn for $39.50? He's really cute, but I feel like he has kind of a pirate look to him, and I like the traditional Santas. Here we go. Now this is what I mean. This cute one from Walmart is more of a traditional Santa to me and he's only $6.79 at Walmart. I love that price. Pottery Barn has these great napkins for $29.50 for four. They're sentiment napkins and I think they would be great for Thanksgiving and Christmas decor for your table. But I found some on Amazon for $8.99, same concept, and they're red. Let's switch over and do some DIY dupes that I found on Pottery Barn that I think that I can do for a lot less. These salt and pepper shakers are $24.50 for the pair. They're turkey ones and they're painted in white. Now I have these turkey candle holders, not really salt and pepper shakers, but I saved these from the trash. They were kind of broken, but in big chunks. So I was able to actually glue it back together. So this is kind of a salvage thing too. Uh, I just glued that back with some super glue and it came together pretty well, but you can still see some of the places where it was broken. So I thought if it was painted, it would work a lot better and it did. It actually was in my favor because I can dupe the Pottery Barn uh, look with just a couple coats of paint. Let's try some basket dupes from Pottery Barn. This one with the braided handles is $129, and I think I can dupe it for a lot less with a basket out of my stash. 
Of course, first things first with all of my projects, clean it all up and get it nice and ready to be painted. So I grabbed my Waverly Black chalk paint and I'm going to go in and give it a coat of paint. Just one coat will do on this. I like to spray baskets most of the time, but it was a little chilly this morning when I worked on it, and I didn't think that it would dry very well, and I knew that the chalk paint would with a little bit of help from my heat tool. So I went, did the inside and outside and got it, got it totally covered until I was happy with it, and of course I'm gonna distress it back so I wasn't too worried if I didn't get it completely, totally covered with all of the basket color. I'm going to use the jute rope that I have that I ordered from Amazon. I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in purchasing some. You can get the rope from, I think it's nautical rope, from Dollar Tree if you want to and use that. But I have this on hand so I'm going to use this and I'm going to cut three lengths the same and braid them together. So I'm just gluing the ends because I know that I'm gonna need to uh, have those stay and then I'm gonna tape it onto my little board here and start braiding the rope. I want the handles, this is for the handles, so I want the handles to be braided on both sides. So I cut two of them and did the same thing for both. To make my handles, my braided handles, the same color as the basket, I'm going to paint it with this Waverly chalk paint and it works really well on painting these braided pieces. So I did both sides and then dried them really well. While they're drying, I'm going to go in and sand my basket just a little bit on the outside and top edges. This just gives it a little bit of dimension and something to look at besides just a plain black basket. So then I'm going to take some floral wire, which is green, and I'm going to uh, weave that in and out of my braided handles to the basket so that it will stay and be secure. I then go in with my black paint and just touch up those green wires so that you can't see them. Here's a cute basket from Pottery Barn, but for $199, no thank you. This is a plant basket, and I have a basket that's very similar to this one, and I also have some jute rope that I can use for the uh, ropes to hold it. So I'm going to do that instead and then decorate it up for Christmas. Did I mention that these are going to be really simple and easy, most of them? Yeah. This is gonna be simple and easy, and like I said, this was in my stash. I probably thrifted this basket a long, long time ago, and I have so many of them, I need to start paring those down. So all I did was weave this in and out of the basket weave so that it had a nice sturdy hold. I twisted it and glued it so that it had a nice look to the sides and that it would uh, bring the two rope ends together so that it would hang straight. then going to take all of the ropes together in my hand and make a loop at the top for a hanger. I'm going to take some of the longer pieces of rope and wrap them around and secure those loops together with a little bit of glue and make sure that it will stay. Then I'll trim off the other uh, pieces of rope that are a little bit too long and then this is going to be done. <music> So let's 
let's really get those baskets cleaned up from my stash and check out this next one from Pottery Barn for $63.99 on sale. It is a beautiful black basket so I thought that I would use this one the other one didn't have handles but this one is and you know it's all an interpretive DIY it's what I see in the flip so I'm going to use this basket and paint it all black again it's a cool morning we don't have heat on in the house so I thought chalk paint it is and I'm going to paint it boy do I wish I had sprayed it uh, it is you know painting baskets is just such a stinker sometimes <music> course I gave it a little bit of distressing with some sandpaper and then sprayed it with some matte clear spray to seal it in. Some of you may or may not know we live my husband and i live off grid in maine so we live off solar panels that charge our batteries that create the power that you see that i'm using right now so it's pretty amazing to me that we can still have uh, tools here and things like that so that we can create what i do create so uh we're so excited to announce that our second craft kit is available. Now we're starting this out small. It's just the two of us. We both hand cut all of these pieces on our machinery downstairs using the wood from here. So this is a second craft kit that we have done. Uh, we are so excited to get this going. It's a little more in depth than the very first one. The, let me tell you what it is. It's an angel. It's a beautiful little angel. So we've cut out the pieces the uh, wings, we've cut out the angel and we have a little stand for it. And so what I'm going to be sending you is all in this box, all that you see here, I will be sending these to you. Here is the craft kit. What you're gonna get, you're gonna get a thank you card with a discount code for next time, next purchase. You are going to get a little pack with a two ounce bottle of Mod Podge, a Rusty Star, a rusty halo that I've already put into a circle if that's how you want to use it and a piece of vintage lace that I've picked up it may not be exactly because I only have small amount of this but I do have a bunch of different kinds so it will be similar so it's all in how many we have so you're gonna get a nice paintbrush nice big brush now this is gonna be great for if you wash it up you can use this to put your stain on your angel, or you can use it to put your Mod Podge on. Either way, they're gonna work out really well. Rinse it, wash it, do all the things, and keep it for next time, because these are really nice. You're going to get a rub-on transfer. This is, uh, I don't know what this is, six by six maybe. And these are all different, so it may not look like this one, but it will have the similar vintage look to it. These are very shiny, but once you put them on and use your antique wax over them, it dulls down that shine just a little bit and looks so much better and just goes with the vintage vibe of this angel. Speaking of antique wax, you're gonna get a one ounce jar of antique wax. That's gonna be plenty to do your angel and some other projects. Along with your Mod Podge, your Mod Podge, you're gonna have plenty left over. You're also going to get an old vintage music note piece of paper. There's music notes on both sides. I'm going to wrap it with twine. And this twine you can use to make your bow for your angel. So this is long enough to do your bow for your angel or whatever you decide you want to use it for. So now for the angel. We have the angel cut out. And it's going to be raw wood. So you're going to get that. You're going to get the stand that it stands on. Everything will be sanded down and uh, just nice and smooth for you. 
and then you're going to get your wings. We have just a handful of these left, so I will have a link down in the description if you're interested. Check out this four pack of napkin holders that are $29.50 at Pottery Barn. I found an eight pack for $8.99 on Amazon. We need to treat Santa too. So this cute cookies for Santa platter is $29.50 at Pottery Barn. But I found this really cute one that's a cookies for Santa platter and milk jug for $14.99. So cute. This little elf wine jacket would be great to take to a friend's house for a festive holiday gathering. This is an elf that goes on the top of a wine bottle. For $24.50, I think I'll pass, but on Amazon, there's a his and hers for $8.99. What a bargain. I have a couple more dupe DIYs for you. I love this adorable little cloche with the ghosties in it, but it's $47 at Pottery Barn. And we're working on Christmas here. I just picked up a cloche and a really cute ribbed plate that I think is beautiful. So I think we're going to try and do a little Christmas decor using those. I have these bottle brush trees I got from Amazon. I'll have a link in the description. And I want to hot glue them down to the plate. They'll be very easy to take off with a little bit of heat from a heat gun. And you can change it out for the seasons. I will add a little bit of pillow stuffing around the bottom to give it a little faux snow and some fairy lights to give it that warm, homey feel. And this is going to be so cute and so simple to do. Now is the time and if you haven't already and you're enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell so YouTube knows to send you notification anytime I upload. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of my projects today. candlesticks from Pottery Barn are $49 to $59. Very beautiful, but I think we can kind of dupe them into something a little bit less expensive. So these are fa were found at my local free area at my dump, and I snagged them up because I knew that painted, they would look fabulous. The rounds are from 24 Hour Crafts. I have a link down in the description. I'm affiliate. So I have a discount code for you down there as well. So make sure you go down and check out all of their beautiful cutouts that they have. I like to keep these rounds on hand so that when I want to do these kind of projects and add a base to or a topper to my candlesticks, I have that all ready to go. So I'm just going to use a little bit of khaki paint and I'm going to put put two coats of paint on these candlesticks. I think these are going to be so much better than what they are right now. I have no idea what happened to them, if they were in the rain or what, but they're pretty banged up. So just a little cleanup, and I think they're gonna look fantastic as my brand new Christmas candlesticks. Now, if you don't have a free area at your dump, just know that if you go to the thrift store, I find these almost every time I go, some sort of candlestick that you could use. Also, salvage would work really well too. Some spindles, put a bottom for a base and a topper on it like these rounds, and it would be a perfect candlestick that you've made all on your own. I used hot glue to glue these two pieces together. I did not paint the top of either piece so that they would just combine really well. If you wanted it to really stay well, I would use wood glue or even E6000. I think that would help those stay together really well if something you were going to sell. I then went in and painted up the parts that I did not paint before so that it would adhere well. And now I'm going to take some music paper that I have, some vintage music paper, and I'm going to tear it down and give it a an old worn look. 
I want to add these to my candles that I'm going to put on top of my candlesticks. So I ripped them down in half so that the paper down in half so that you could wrap it around and then I'm just going to glue it on. Again, it can be taken off with uh, a little bit of heat from your heat tool and very easy to disassemble and add some different decor if you wanted to. I then add some burgundy yarn from a previous project and this piece is done. I hope you guys enjoyed my projects today. Let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite and which one it was. The link to my Etsy shop will be down in the description. If you use the coupon code THANKYOU10 down in the discount code area on Etsy, you will save 10%. So make sure that you use that. Check out the description box below. You'll find links to a lot of the products that I've used and talked about today. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.